Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bailey, this is Mercedes, and I do have Moose here. Say hello guys. Hello. Well, we are sitting in the car because we are on the way to the vet, and I thought I would take you guys along. Um, we're doing some checkups. So for Moose, it's just his yearly checkup. And then for Mercedes, I don't think I mentioned on this channel that she is actually in heat. And I just wanna check and make sure that a few things are okay. I might be able to tell you guys more in detail afterwards what's going on, cause I'm kinda running out of time. I need to head to the vet soon. Yeah, but she's in heat and I just wanna make sure everything is okay and that it just looks okay because my goal is to breed her probably next year and this is like her first like true heat so I just want to make sure everything looks okay nothing to be concerned about things like that but you I mean she's acting fine other than like a little more tired than usual um, and then she may I'll show you all later she does have her diaper on which has been like a new experience for her but she's doing well with that she's just my lovey-dovey burner right you just want pets all the time and there's moose so yeah that is gonna be today's video going to the vet and just making sure everything is okay with moose and especially mercedes i'll fill you guys in more once we're there and because i need to leave right now so we won't be late so all right so we just made it to the vet and actually with some time to spare so i'm gonna go in in a little bit but um yeah we made it to the vet and mercedes saw another dog so she's like looking out there it's a lot handling two dogs at the vet so i'll try and get as many clips inside as possible she sees the dog especially mercedes moose has done this many times he's very easy it's mercedes as you can tell um she is a little work so and then i just want to share with you guys the one thing that i always bring to the vet is just a treat pouch with treats in it this one i've had forever like since i got moose so this is like three years old um but this is like filled with treats you have to be a good girl to get the treats also we are not in my truck as you guys probably tell we are in my dad's jeep and then there's moose oh lord y'all ready to go to the vet so i I think we're gonna go in and I'll try and get as many clips as I can. But yeah, let's head in. You hear them? Mercedes, sit. Are you being a good girl? Have to sit. Good girl. Bringing two dogs to the vet is no joke, especially with this one. It's okay, sit. No. Sit. Yes, good girl. Hi, hi, hi. Mercedes. Waiting on the doctor, huh? Mercedes, did you get your shots? Lucy, you got a shot? We're almost done. Yeah, we're almost done. We just finished with the vet and we're sitting in the parking lot right now with the windows down, so Holy crap, you guys, dogs are expensive. I just spent like all of my money on my dogs today, but I thought I would give you guys kind of a rundown really quick. So I did get a couple clips while we were in there, and like I said, I was just bringing it moose for his like yearly checkup that was due, so I had no concerns about him. The one that I was not concerned about, but just like wanted to make sure, wanted to check out was Mercedes because you guys, so she had Moose. Moose keeps putting his fat head in the frame. So my concern with her, well with Mercedes, okay, she started her first heat in January and I marked it on my calendar so I could keep track of it and keep up with it. So that was in January. Then in February, like one time I saw blood and I was like, 
oh it might just be residual like I didn't think anything of it I was not concerned about it because it was like one time and with females who are not spayed their first heat aren't like a full normal heat so I just thought it was like residual didn't think it anything of it she was acting normal and then in March and March like the end of March I started seeing blood again and I saw it twice in her when she would pee and I was like okay this is not normal like she's not supposed to be in heat it's been a couple months since her heat and so I took her to the vet and I took her to the vet I know I vlogged it one time I think this was just like for vaccines or whatever it wasn't in regards to this whole situation but I went to that vet like in the area where we moved and um but anyway so I took her to that vet for this whole like situation and they're like it might be UTI so they did a urine test and they checked her out and physically like she's perfectly fine and also in her pee it was not only blood but blood clots and so anyways they did the urine test it was not a UTI it's just some infection I guess she had a high red blood cell count and they gave antibiotics and it went away so and then this month she starts bleeding again and I was freaking out at first because I was like oh my gosh this infection but then I realized her first heat was in January and it's July now which is like six months so I was like okay it's her heat and she started that today is Thursday she started that like last Wednesday so it's been a week and a day so she started last Wednesday and when it was like consistent blood and I realized and checked my calendar that it was six months she's in heat so I realized that and I was like okay Mercedes is in heat but then but then Saturday night it was like 10:30, 11 o'clock I was in the shower and my mom tells me like did you not hear that and I was like hear what like I was in the shower didn't hear anything like Mercedes was crying but my mom went in there to check on her and she just sat up normal in her crate and you know she's like so maybe she you know got caught in the crate or I, I mean I don't know what it could have been like she, she was like I don't know but I checked on her and she was fine so you know I was out of the shower so I was in my room and she ran up to me crying and guys I'm not talking about a little whimper I'm talking about like bloody murder like screaming at the top of her lungs and then 10 seconds later it stopped and I'm like holding on to her I'm like oh my gosh what is this every 15 20 minutes she would do that and this started at 11 p.m. and I ended up making a pallet on the floor and I was thinking like okay it might be cramps but do dogs get cramps what do you do for them I don't know if they can take human pain reliever I know they can take some human like allergy relief and I end up making a pallet on the floor I slept on the floor that night and to be with Mercedes and I got a heating pad I got a little bowl of ice she didn't really care for the ice but she liked the heating pad and eventually I think that helped so it was like 11 to 1 in the morning I was up and then I think two more times she like curled up next to me so I guess either she was getting more used to it or it just didn't hurt that bad and then it went away and had it happened since well I think it was Sunday I scheduled an appointment a vet appointment just to make sure everything was okay and that was what today's appointment was about but yeah that's what's been going on with Mercedes she has not cried like that since that night and so I figured it was cramps and I did like read on the internet I mean just from different sources that they might not exactly experience cramps or it's hard to know but they can experience discomfort so that's what I'm thinking what it was so that's why I brought her to the vet today was the main reason and eventually my goal if you're kind of new to my channel my goal with Mercedes is to breed her I would love to breed Bernadoodles and maybe some Bernese Mountain Dogs. I'm not exactly sure, but Bernadoodles. And my goal would be to breed Bernadoodles that are best fit to be 
service dogs, therapy dogs, facility dogs, ESAs, and overall just great companions for people. And I just have so many ideas and I believe in that. I'm so passionate about that. So that is my goal with her. I would love to do that. So yeah, just like going through that and this is my first time with a unspayed, I don't know if that's correct English, but a female who's not spayed. It's just my first experience. It's her first time going through her heat, so that would probably make it her just like what's going on as well, which added to it and yeah, so that was the reason for the appointment today. Sorry that was kind of a long story, but that's what's been going on. And yeah, back to that dogs are expensive, like getting them checked out, their vaccines. Oh my gosh. And also, so I went back to the vet that I originally brought Mercedes to and Moose, like when I moved back to Texas, because the one by our new house, not that it's bad, I'm, it's not bad whatsoever, it's just okay, you know, and they were more expensive when I was comparing prices, and I'm, yeah, like nothing bad about them, I just, you know, they're okay, and I think I feel more comfortable taking them to a place where they know them, and yeah they just have all the records they've been seeing moose since we moved back to texas and then mercedes when she was a puppy so anyways let's go through what they got done today and sorry if i'm sweating it is again it is summer in texas and it is unforgiving right okay so let's start with moose this is the cheapest okay so moose got his comprehensive wellness exam they looked over him and they said that he is in perfect healthy condition physical condition like they're really happy with that so good job moose then he got his dhpp annual booster then he got an internal blood parasite screening which was his heartworm test your big cat head and then whatever disposal fee so all of that most cost me a hundred and eighty dollars and seventy five cents that's not bad okay <laughs> four dogs I would say that's not bad for a visit okay and then Mercedes so Mercedes she's the one she cost me the most today so I guess you get the prize for that okay so move or Mercedes got a comprehensive wellness exam they said she looked good physically and like her that area looked fine she was in heat um everything looked fine physically and then she got a lepto vaccine her rabies vaccine which is three year um so she doesn't have to do that for three more years and moose got the three years so he didn't have to have it this time he'll have to have it next year i think is when it expires or whatever she also got the heartworm test which oh yeah moose's was negative and i'm still waiting on hers which i'm assuming is negative because moose was but they will call and let me know oh and then for both of them i got heart guard and next guard they just gave me one pack and i'm going to split them between the two so it's like a six month supply but for two dogs it's a three month supply so they put that under mercedes and then oh and then they gave me rimaldo 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 i don't know how to say it but it is for just that pain and discomfort for the cramps if that happens again. It's like a pain relief anti-inflammatory medicine and even if I don't use it all this time or need it this time around, next time if she experiences cramps then I will have that and hopefully that would help and not have to spend like three hours until one in the morning, um, you know, trying to comfort her so maybe that would relieve her quicker. So all of that. So I guess this isn't all Mercedes because the heart guard and next guard is for both of them. But that was $461.16. Freaking crazy. So my total today, grand total, was $641.91. Tell me dogs are not expensive. <laughs> It's the price you pay to keep your dogs all healthy and getting their vaccines and whatnot and whatnot. So, and then they gave me, I don't, well, they gave me, I don't do it like this, 
Mercedes like rabies thing. I'm just folding it because of the information on the other side, but they gave me her new rabies tag. And then they gave me like a vaccine schedule, so that will be nice so I can keep up with it better and put it in my calendar. My camera was dying, so I went ahead and just drove home. And I think the last thing I was talking about was that it cost 641 something for both of my dogs today and that's just the reality of dog ownership i want to share all of the parts of that with you guys so if you are wanting to be a dog owner if you are a new dog owner just keep that in mind dog ownership is great and wonderful but also it comes with unexpected vet visits or just having to update all of their vaccines at once. And so yeah, just keep a stash of money or a little savings for your dogs. And that way these unexpected vet visits don't come to a surprise to your bank account. So that would be like my biggest thing is have a little savings account or just vet visit like stash of money just for these instances that way you're not caught off guard but i'm glad that both moose and mercedes are perfectly healthy obviously i was more concerned about mercedes or just wanting to make sure everything while she's and he looks good as i mentioned in the car i am planning to breed her probably next year she'll be two we have to do a OFA testing before that and I'm hoping to do that this year. But yeah, my goal is to breed her and I would love to make Bernadoodles that are best fit for work or just being like a really good companion to others and I just want to get the Bernadoodle love out there and just share with people what a Bernadoodle has done for me. You know, Moose is my service dog and all of that. Um, I was wanting to bring that up because their weights. So Moose is 77 pounds, no, 78 pounds today, which he's kind of been in that range, like 78, 80 is kind of his flux range. And then Mercedes, I think last time she was like 74. Today she was 70. So I guess that's her flux range is like 70 to 74 pounds, which I was expecting her to be bigger, you know, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, they can get up to like the 100s, but I think for breeding purposes, that might be a plus because some people don't want a really big, huge dog, and with a Bernie's Mountain Dog, you can definitely get that range. I mean, she carries large jeans, so not saying that any of her puppies might be over 75 80 pounds they could be but it's just more likely like a poodle they're not that large like the poodles that i've looked at i'm just looking for studs and whatnot just researching for when that time comes but they're like 50 pounds like around there and i think like a 50 to 70 range is an ideal range because not a lot of people want a huge huge dog and yeah so i'm really excited for that and kind of shared with you guys some of my future plans or thoughts which i've talked about before on this channel but i've kind of taken a break from it just because i'm in a season i guess of waiting for that and i'm still in college and would want to give my full 100 percent to breeding and just the cost as well like paying for college and for like breeding the right way testing health testing raising your puppies on curriculum like just all of it is so 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 expensive and it's just not possible right now while i'm in college so i will be graduating soon though i'll be done in february of 24 so it'll be here faster than i know it but yeah, those are some of, some of my future plans. I'm sorry this kind of turned into like a more chatty go to the vet with us, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it. And I'm just glad that everyone is healthy and just got what they need. But yeah, I hope you guys still enjoyed this video. Thank you for coming along to the vet with us. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. If you are not subscribed already, join the Pause of Purpose fam, the Burner fam over here. And yeah, I will see you guys in our next video. Bye friends. Yeah.